Welcome to Fall Rise Give, a space where we invite you to dig into the real cause of your suffering. Looking at opportunities for growth with a change in your beliefs, thoughts, and actions so you can be your true self and be inspired. Join us as we explore life's ups and downs and navigate the twists and turns, sharing stories of resilience, hope, and the transformative power of giving back. Whether you're looking for a change, in recovery, or simply seeking inspiration, this podcast is your go-to for candid conversations, raw emotions, and a whole lot of heart. Tune in and discover how to fall, rise, and give back on life's extraordinary journey. I'm not a dancer. I'm just going to tell you that right now. Welcome to Fall, Rise, Give. Turn struggles into opportunities by being your true self and help others. I'm Bartender Bob. That's Kumar. Neither of us are dancers. I went and saw live music yesterday, uh, Kumar, and uh, I've decided I'm not a dancer. All those years in high school, all those years ago in high school when they had dances and stuff, I never. I went to one dance in my entire career in high school. Last night, I stood by the side of the wall and just watched other people dance, but I am not a dancer. I'm just going to throw that out there and get it out of it. Just get it out of here. Yeah, yeah, and it's kind of funny. We're similar in a lot of ways. We're different in other ways. Um you know, it's kind of funny um, being brought up Indian and Indian movies, Bollywood, as they call them, mm-hmm. they have they're basically musicals. There's all of a sudden the plot will stop and everybody will get on the dance floor, start dancing um, every 10 minutes. There's this new song in a Bollywood movie. And so traditionally speaking, men in Indian culture dance a lot. And so that was kind of ingrained. I went to dance classes um even when I was in Minnesota in middle school, based on an Indian community thing that we went to. And so um, I grew up dancing. I remember putting it down, man, um, in college, <laughs> in high school, um, going to clubs. Yeah, I love to dance. I uh, I went to a corporate event last year, and I didn't want to dance because I feel I'm old and, you know, out of shape, whatever. But I actually finally went down there, and I danced for one song. Um, and so... Yeah, I used to dance. I don't dance much very often, but uh, dancing is a good way to just kind of let it all loose, you know, and and just groove with the moment, kind of be present. So, yeah, it can be cool, but I hear you. Sometimes people are afraid to get out there and let loose because they may not be good dancers. You know, my foot will tap, my body will move, and I'll do I'll I'll like I'll do the Denny Terrio pointing up to the sky, pointing up to the stars. That's about as dancey as I get. <laughs> that's you know, and that's that's all you can expect. That's all you got. But the fact is, you're you're moving with the groove of the music, right? And I think music is such a powerful tool to get us excited. And so, uh, music is one of the top three things that you can do for yourself, for your soul, to get yourself excited, get yourself moving. Um, I listen to music every day. I don't always dance every day. Obviously, I don't dance hardly at all. But music <laughs> is a really powerful tool. Yeah. Right. So, all right, let's, let's kind of, let's parlay that into our topic today, which is, which is a uh, personal power and trust. And so for myself, I don't trust that I have, that I, that I have the, uh, the rhythm to make it look like any, you know, like it's effortless. Some people will get out there on the dance floor and they'll make things work. And it's like, how in the heck did, how did you move? And how does that look cool? And I go out there and try to do the same thing. And it looks like, uh, nothing, nothing against epileptics, but it looks like I've like I'm an epileptic in the, you know, in a, in, in a, in a slippery store. So, you know what I mean? I'm just moving around and it doesn't look like anything. It looks like somebody's going to push me over and make fun of me. Yeah. But let's, let's, I mean, let's get real. You and I are not going to dance with the stars. Right. And most people aren't, <laughs> right. who are we trying to impress? We're trying to just be ourselves, enjoy the music. And that's kind of what life is all about, you know, enjoying the moment, getting out there, um, just be yourself, listen to music, groove as much as you can. Um, I see people, you know, free spirit dance. I watch a little bit of, uh, reels on Facebook and I get these people that are dancing to Billie Jean and Michael Jackson and they got like hundreds of thousands of views. People really enjoy watching superstars dance, but we don't have to be superstars. We don't need to impress anybody. We're just out there grooving, having a good time. Well, maybe that could be our, that could be our million dollar idea right there. Kumar, get up there and just, <laughs> just be yourself. Just be yourself. Exactly. So <laughs> let's talk about personal power. Let's talk about, you know, being, being you and being powerful, being you. That's it. Um, a theme of this book and this podcast is to help you realize who you are, what your true desires are, 
what your true fears are um, and help you figure out, you know, what you want in life. And nobody can do that for you. You have to do that through your own personal power, reflection, meditation, prayer, whatever, patterns that you've developed, your thoughts, beliefs, actions. And to get there, it's a long journey. So let me take a step back for a moment. We're applying the principles, the emotional, spiritual principles of the seven chakras into this uh, philosophy. Like I said before, I've studied them for 19 years. You could say 20 years, but my wife wants me to say, hey, just round it up to 20. But actually, no, I've been studying it for 19 years. And so the first thing that we did when we talked about it, we described all the chakras. And the, a couple of weeks ago, we talked about chakra number one, the root chakra, this acceptance, where you're at today, being grounded, accepting the things that, you know, where you're at, um, things that you can't change, things that maybe you have the courage to change the things that you can. We talked about the serenity prayer. Last week, you talked about your purpose. What's your true heart's desire? What are the things you've always wanted? What's the skill? What's the gift that you have? And then you start to get reflective on what it is that you want. And you're saying, okay, I want to do something. I want to be a music um, artist, or I want to start a business. A lot of people may want to start a business or may want to create more financial security for themselves, um, may want to go for a new job. So the third chakra is where we get stuck the most in our personal power. That's our gut chakra. That's our stomach chakra. A lot of fear, doubt, anxiety gets stuck in there. And it's where our self-esteem gets stuck. So how do you overcome that? Um, it's been a challenge for me personally. This is where I get stuck a lot. Um, I got a prayer from... Um, or what they call the promises out of the attitude adjustment program, as I call it, the AA, is one of the promises says fear of people and economic conditions will leave us. And I want to talk about a little story um, that I learned um, way back when from a guy who's a very famous author. A lot of young people may not realize him today, but uh, Norman Vincent Peale, Norman Vincent Peale wrote a book called The Power of Positive Thinking. And we really have to dig deep down to go after what we want through positive thinking and possibility thinking. So positive thinking gets us into the possibility world. Negative thinking or realistic thinking stops us from going after what we want. So in the book, and I think I listened to the book and audio book years ago, and he said he met a guy who told him the story about a prayer that he has mentioned. Norman had a prayer. And this guy came up to him after one of his seminars and said, you know, my father struggled as a traveling salesperson all of his life. He would never close a deal. We'd move from town to town and we'd struggle all through our life until one day he chose to start doing your prayer. And his life changed dramatically. He started to get close more deals. We became super successful and we had a nice upbringing. And my father always did this before every sales call. And here's what the prayer goes like. And I remember this prayer, and I've done it before job interviews, before sales calls years ago when I used to do sales. But whenever I get into a presentation or whenever I get into a thing, I may have a little fear of presenting to people or may have a fear of whatever. And here's a prayer that I do. And again, it's not anything religious, but it is talking about God or higher power. And it goes like this. I believe I'm divinely guided. I believe I will always take a right turn in the road. And I believe God will always make a way, even if there is no way. There's a lot to unpack there. We're not necessarily going to unpack it, but just basically is, I believe I'm divinely guided. I believe I will take a right turn in the road. And I believe God will make a way, even if there is no way. So when you get stuck in fear, anxiety, fear is something that we talked about a couple of weeks ago as well, as which is part of, they're all interrelated, the chakras are. It's not like one thing just focuses on one and that's all it focuses on. They're all tied in together. It's your energy center. And we're here to unblock that energy. So the only way that I know how to unblock this energy is through tools of trust. Having faith in something beyond yourself. Does that make sense, Bob? Yeah, it makes total sense. And honestly, that prayer, I, it's that's a lot of what I... When I get stuck in something, if I'm thinking... I used to read at my church... And I know we've talked about being Catholic and being brought up Catholic and stuff. And I used to be a, I used to be a reader at my church. And even though I did radio for so many years, I hate talking in front of people. 
I hate getting yeah. up in front of people. I hate, you know, I, I can talk behind a microphone. I can talk in my little box. I can, I can make sense and sound like I know what I'm talking about when I'm doing my own little thing. But when I'm in front of people, for some reason, I get in, into my own head. And a lot of times before I would go in and do uh, either reading at church, I did improv for a while just so that way I can kind of get out of my, uh, get out of my own box myself. I always said to myself, you know, do the best you can. God help me to to do the best that I can in the situations that I have. So it's similar to what what the, what uh, Peel's prayer was, but it's it's it, it 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 fit me in my way. But had I known that one, I probably would have gone ahead and, and used that prayer because I mean I, I like the way it is. It's three things. It's it's a list of three in order to get you kind of on that right track. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And I don't know if you remember talking back to the story of our middle middle school I think it was seventh grade I had just moved to the U.S. A year and a half into it I was a shy kid I always put, put my hand on my face and Mr. Pass the English teacher had us get up in front of class and talk about a book that we read and I picked a book that was pretty simple Star Wars and I remember being in front of the class and just freezing up and couldn't do it and Mr. Pass was an interesting character. Um, he didn't actually like the fact that this shy Indian kid. Um, so he was kind of cruel at the moment, but it is what it is. And I remember I couldn't do, actually do it. And I, I don't know, I don't think I failed the class, but I definitely failed that assignment. Mm -hmm. And so I remember going in through college and um, going into a presentation, a communications class that we were to present something. And me and the teammates that were going to present this thing, we actually went out to the bar and did shots before we could actually go present. <laughs> and so to kind so of you're slurring yourself, your way through it? <laughs> slurring your way through it a little bit. Uh, basically, fear of public speaking is a big fear. People can oftentimes communicate one-on-one, -on -one, but in front of a crowd, we just freeze up. Mm -hmm. And I think that's one of the biggest fears. I think... Lots of other fears we can get into, but public speaking is one of the biggest ones. Another story that happened to me that I got my fear and how I overcame that is a woman named Sarah was a valedictorian, and she spoke at the class commencement uh, piece after my college graduation. And she went in, and she started talking about life, and there's different stages of life, and each part, each stage is like a painting. You create what you wanted to create, and you've got this beautiful – you know, pastry of colors and life and all these stories around a particular painting. And she went on and just rocked it. She killed it. And I'm looking at my friends next, sitting next to me and my family, and I'm going, that's Sarah, that shy little girl from freshman year at the bars that couldn't talk to anybody? I'm like, what's going on here? So Sarah actually um, was, I found out later, was the president of the Toastmasters Club. Oh, and Toastmasters is considered, um, you know, it's international. It's uh, a public speaking organization. A lot of shy people and a lot of people that want to get in there go there. And by its own credentials and by everything that I've learned, Toastmasters is one of the biggest personal development organizations in the world because it's such a big thing to get your voice out there, to be able to talk to people be able to get what you want. We're going to talk about that in a couple more sessions about communication styles. I was writing about it last night. But fear of public speaking is kind of what you got to get over. And a personal development organization that's basically $20 a month or whatever it costs now to join Toastmasters, highly, highly recommend it. I went through the process. I got certified as a Toastmaster. I almost became an accredited Toastmaster, which is the second level. I met incredible people through the organization. And um, I'll even tell you a little story about Toastmasters for me. It, it was, so I highly recommend Toastmasters. If you have a fear of public speaking or if you want to get your voice heard, definitely find a local Toastmaster chapter. So I met a guy in a Toastmasters conference who basically was an executive at like Safeway Foods or something. He was like a senior VP or something. I met him at a conference. I had just graduated from college. I was part, part of Toastmasters. And he gave me a thank you note. I gave him a business card. I've started my own business. And he gave me a thank you note a week later. He's an executive writing a college kid a thank you note. And he said to me, your enthusiasm for learning is going to be the key to success in your life. Hmm. I'm 22 years old and executives writing to me. Well, I talked about my startup. A couple of years later, I looked at the word enthusiasm and I chose to be a lifelong learner. 
and my enthusiasm for learning ended up being a key to success. I actually ended up getting the getting the URL enthusiasm.com and started a company years later in Seattle called enthusiasm.com, which turned into Enthusiasm Technologies. We, as mentioned before, um, we raised a bunch of venture funds investments. Ended up two years later selling the company to a big technology company out of Portland, Oregon. But anyway, so my enthusiasm for learning was the key. And so as you develop your personal power, you shouldn't be fixed at trying to be perfect. You should just take the next step. The next step to get your personal power is to overcome that fear and anxiety. You just got to follow what Nike says. And that's their big motto in life. You just do it. Just start. Whatever it is that you're afraid to do, just start. You figured out your goals, your desires, and your purpose. Just start. Just do it. What about the trust issue, though? I mean, I, I, you know, it's easy to say just do it, but how do you trust that it's going to happen and it's going to work out the way that you want it to do? Or, you know, how do you overcome the fears of, oh, my God, I'm going to fail? Or, you know, in, in my case, I'm going to go out there and try to dance and everybody's going to be looking at me like I'm, you know, what's wrong with that guy? <laughs> you know, how do, yeah, how do you see, end up letting that go and, and getting that trust piece there? Yeah, I think that's where um, – that's where – faith and prayer comes in. I struggle with that myself. Um, and I think the only way you get trust is, so there's no guarantees, right? There's no guarantee that you'll succeed. There's no guarantees that you'll fail. Somewhere in between, we talked about falling and failure. Almost everybody, you know, Michael Jordan didn't make his high school team, he got as a, a varsity high school team. He took that as a lesson and he kept on practicing and shooting and developing skills. So you'll fail, but that failure is part of that learning process, becoming a lifelong learner and going through it, right? So the trust, the fact that, hey, you may not get the outcome that you want right now, but go, the fact that you went on this journey to start something, you do certain things, you learn, you'll do it better next time. And so the way to develop trust, I believe, is by actually surrendering to your higher power all you can do is control the things that you can control, which is take action. Hopefully you learn from others. Hopefully you learn mm -hmm. from executives like I did. Read books and all that stuff and keep getting better and better. Trust in a higher power is essential. We talked about the Catholic upbringing. We talked about faith in God. And one of the things that I actually use for myself lately, because I've been through a lot of work stress lately and I got kind of sick this week and I had lots of fears and doubts in, about work and everything else, is... I choose to live and learn through God's love. So I don't expect God to solve all my problems, but I expect God to take care of me and my basic needs. And I, all my life I've looked at and I've been a basically, um, I've been taken care of. Um, and I remind myself that I choose to live and learn through God's love. Love is the most important power. We're going to talk about that next week how we get real energy to solve those problems. That's the heart chakra. But really trusting in God, trusting in your higher power, trusting in the universe, whatever you want to call it, and big, big energy sometimes as I call it that, the universe, um, is the only way I know how. And almost everybody from Einstein that we've talked about believes in a higher power that's guiding the universe and guiding you. And we're going to talk about intuition and listening to yourself. So um, you're not going to be guaranteed success, but you'll be further along on the journey by trying and by trusting rather than you are by being fearful or being pessimistic or being realistic. Sometimes when you, when you do stuff like that, that causes that, that anxiety inside of you, you know, it's like, Oh my gosh, I'm going to be able to, I'm, I'm going to do this. I'm going to try this. And then, you know, you, you walk up to the, you walk up to the ledge to, you know, to take that first step off into doing that. And then all of a sudden your anxiety pulls you back and it makes you start to second guess and start to second think about the things that you're trying to do or the things that you're going to accomplish. Or, you know, you got that little voice in the back of your head. That's got, you know, that self doubt that you have. And I, I, I know that I'm not the only person that has that. I'm, I'm guessing that, you know, everybody that's listening to this and everybody that, you know, that's ever thinking about listening to this has had that anxiety and that feeling of, Oh my God, what if I fail? What if this doesn't work out the way I want it to work out? And what if, you know, what if the world comes crashing down around me and you know, yeah, 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 yeah. totally, totally. Right. And so we all have those fears. And I think I mentioned it before. Fears are false 
fears could be, somebody said this a while ago, years ago, that I recognize, false emotions which appear real. They appear real to the person who's feeling them. For me, anxiety is real around my professional or my financial securities or whatever. Um, I've been struggling with that all my life. I think I've talked to you about it before as a kid. I was afraid of being a bag person or a bag lady or whatever, right? So they're there, but you got to take the next step. You got to take the baby steps. If you don't know how to start a business, maybe Google search on how to start a business. Take the next simple step. You don't have to climb a mountain in one day. You start on the path. You go to the parking lot to the base of the mountain, and today you're going to take, you know, um, a mile hike up the up the hill. Just try it. Um, starting a business, I've had three or four failures, but I had one success um, that carried me through. We're not guaranteed that our pasta is going to be successful, but we started mm -hmm. it. We started it and probably had 10 or 20 people. Now we've got hundreds of people. And then soon we'll have thousands because we're advertising on Facebook and other places. And we reached 50,000 people that saw our ad yesterday. Um, that's pretty cool. We had hundreds of people that went into our site yesterday to go listen to it. So it's step by step. I had fears about this project this week. Um, I had thoughts about it, but we're just taking baby steps. We're not expecting to be rock stars and having million downloads by, you know, the next couple of months. We're just going to make progress slowly. Take the next step. Follow the Nike model. Just do it. Just start whatever it is that you want to do by focusing on what you want. And then know that the universe or God or higher power will take care of the rest. You know, isn't it kind of like that movie from the 80s that won, uh, what about, was it, what about Bob? Where it's you know baby steps, so you take the baby steps in order to take the longer steps. So you you just you bite things off in little chunks. It's like the, it's like the old the old story about how do you eat an elephant one bite at a time. So I mean, basically, you're just taking apart a piece that you can you know that you can comfortably manage in order to get the job done. Exactly. Um, this guy I I meant um, I mentioned it last week. Um, Jim Quick wrote a book called Limitless, and he talks about reading. He talks about all the famous people in the world have read books. They read a book a week, all the successful people. And um, one of the things that he says is just start reading a page. Just start reading a couple of lines. Because what will happen when we take that step, we'll take the next step. Nobody ever stops just reading a book but a couple of sentences, right? They'll read a page. Maybe they'll read two or three pages. Maybe they'll read 10 pages, 20 pages. Then you start the momentum. You know, action causes a reaction. It takes more action. So the thing is to get moving. And little by little, you'll be shocked. But if you don't start on the journey, you will fail already. That's the other thing. Failure will stop you. If you don't start the journey, you've already failed, and you're not going to get there. But starting the journey, will you may fail, but you're going to learn and constantly refine. And as you read more, as you learn more, as you talk to more people, as you'll start figuring it out. Um, and that's the kind of thing that's what's worked for me. I feel I'm relatively successful in life. It's worked for a lot of other people. Story is filled with people. We, I talk about Abraham Lincoln. He failed in politics. He failed in personal health. He failed in business. And that guy changed the world and the course of the United States of America, right? And so right. It's, it's a fascinating thing if you just start with a baby step. So the goal today is just trust your higher power, ask for guidance, and take a baby step towards whatever you want. Don't go after things that you don't necessarily want. That's why the developing that second, that purpose, that desire is really important. What have you always wanted to do, always wanted to be? And articulating that in writing, working through that and saying, I really want this. And what's the best way for me to go after that? And that's kind of the key is like, okay, trust in whatever process and taking baby steps. So how do we use the solar chakra then to to kind of circumvent all the, the things that are blocking us. And, you know, so how does that solar chakra tie into that? The solar chakra is your personal power, right? And so the way to get past the anxiety and the fear is by taking action. If you sit there and you get paralyzed by the fear, which turns into anxiety, that's when things get worse. And so trusting in a higher power, like I said, having a mantra, having a prayer, as simple as, I choose to live and learn with God's love. 
I choose to live and learn with my higher power, whatever that is. Mm -hmm. Having trust in the universe, having trust in something beyond ourselves, we talk about giving. As soon as you start thinking about how you can help others get outside of yourself, your life starts to get better. You start to get power to yourself. So the way to use that chakra is by actually trust, building trust. You build trust by actually having faith in a higher power, knowing and thinking about how many times in your life has a higher power come and saved you? How many times have you gone to a situation and like, oh my God, this was a small miracle or whatever? All of us have reflections or pieces in history that were like, something came around the corner, you were hungry for the day, you found a piece of food. I had a situation like that in Paris. I got lost and I had no money in the pocket. And next thing you know, I'm in line at a Burger King in Paris and I had no money in the food. And I asked the person behind me, they're like, yeah, I'll give you whatever cash I have. And they ended up buying me lunch. The person was a high school mate, obviously we're in a exchange program, but they had enough money to pay for me for lunch, whatever. So uh, you will be provided for anything to do in life. You have to have trust. We trust when we go on the side of the road, when we're driving on a two lane highway, that we are going to be on the right side of the lane and the other person crossing on the other side of the street, we trust that they're going to stay in their lane. So trust is a big part of life anyways. Just use that trust to apply it to your individual venture of whatever you want to be, an artist, a new job, a new business, and just take that baby step. Just do it. That's the motto. Just do it. And just believe in a higher power. Hey, do me a favor. Give me the give me that prayer again, the, uh, the three-line prayer. Awesome. That really is a, a good one. Again, it's by Norman Vincent Peale, classic American author, power of positive thinking, and it provided success to this guy and his dad, and I'm sure lots of other people. It goes like this. I believe I'm divinely guided. I believe I will always take a right turn in the road. I believe God will always make a way, even if there is no way. Thank you for joining us on this episode of Fall Rise Give, where we explore stories of resilience, growth, and giving back. If you enjoyed today's episode, please visit our website at www.fallrisegive.com. Also consider subscribing to our podcast on your favorite platform and leaving us a review. Your feedback helps us to continue to bring you inspiring stories. Stay tuned for our next episode, and remember, every fall is a chance to rise, and every rise is an opportunity to give. Until next time, keep falling, rising, and giving. This is Fall Rise Give, produced by podcastforhire.com. Thank you for listening.